today's video, I'd just like to share that 94% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So if you are feeling generous, be sure to drop a like and a sub, and let's get right into today's video. Thank you. Howdy, I'm Daxio, and this is Plugged In News. And in today's pin update, we have some updates from yesterday, um, such as justice for J6, protesters call for due process for capital attack detainees. And this is just a little update story on uh, the current rally that was going on today at the Capitol, as well as U.S. authorities accelerate removal of Haitians at U.S.-Mexico border. Let's get right into that. For the first story today, this is coming from Breitbart by Penny Star, and is justice for J6 protesters call for due process for capital attack detainees. And it goes on to read, Despite reports of potential violence and beefed-up security, including the National Guard and fencing, Saturday's justice for J6 rally attracted a few hundred demonstrators and ended without major incidents. Photos and video taken around the Capitol show media and police mainly heavy, mainly heavily armed in riot gear vastly outnumbered protesters who were gathered in support of defendants detained in connection with the January 6th Capitol attack. Well, at least they had a lot more uh, police out there than protesters. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it was more than last time, the January 6th, but yeah. Anyways, it goes on to read, in the video ahead of the rally, Brainerd told people who wanted to attend not to wear shirts with any political message or disparaging signage. Brainerd pointed out uh, that violent protests on the left from Antifa in Portland, Oregon, to those who stormed congressional office buildings to protect then-Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh were never prosecuted. These protesters, he said, were bailed out on the same day that they were arrested. This is in contrast to what Brainerd and other speakers said is the treatment of people now jailed in D.C. related to the Capitol attack, which wasn't really even an attack, um, some of whom have been allegedly kept in solitary confinement and others reportedly not allowed to shave or cut their hair. Those in attendance called for transparency and the release of more than a dozen hours of video from January 6th still unseen by the public. Release the video, the crowd chanted, equal justice or no justice. We're going to raise our voices in defense of our fellow Americans who've had their rights and due process violated, said Brainerd, who called these individuals political prisoners, which is exactly what they are, because all of the Democrat-funded uh, attorney generals and etc., if they let all those Antifa protesters out, the ones that stormed uh, the Capitol in Portland, or the police precinct in Portland, and then I believe the town hall building in Portland, or maybe the mayor's office, and they just let them go the same day, throwing Molotov cocktails, assaulting police, etc, etc, and they just let them go. Um, I do have a video to show you guys, though. It's basically just what the protests look like. I mean, there's, it looks to be around 30 to 40 reporters around one one of the protesters and the protesters giving a speech it seemed that there was a lot more reporters than protesters uh to say the least so yeah here's that video check that out there's a name for it it's called insurrection are any of our countrymen and women being held in charge of insurrection all right, and for the last story today, this is coming from Routers by Alexandria Almer, and it is U.S. authorities accelerate removal of Haitians at U.S.-Mexico border. And I reported on this yesterday that there was a giant influx of people coming in, and uh, now we've the United States or the the border um, patrol has now started expelling them. So U.S. authorities move some. Uh, moved some 2,000 people to other immigration processing stations on Friday from a Texas border town that has seen an influx of Haitian and other immigrants, or and other migrants, the Department of Homeland Security said on Saturday. Such transfers will continue in order to ensure that irregular migrants are swiftly taken into custody, processed, and removed from the United States consistent with our laws and policy, DH said in a statement. While some of those seeking jobs and safety have made their way to the United States for weeks or months, it is only in recent days that the number converging on Del Rio, Texas has drawn widespread attention, posing a humanitarian and political challenge for the Biden administration. And I like now that it's only now that there's 10,000 people now it's an issue. But even though there may be like 500 people coming in a day, 500 people a week, 500 people in two weeks, that nearly adds up to 10,000 or maybe even more. I'm not doing the math in my head right now, but 7,000. Um, 
But yeah, that's what that leads to. So either which way, we've still been getting an influx constantly. Constantly. Um, anyways, uh, DHS said in response to more than the 10,000 migrants sheltering under the Del Rio International Bridge. They're just hanging out under a bridge that connects the city with Ciudad Ang Acuna in Mexico. It was accelerating flights to Haiti and other destinations within the next 72 hours. It said it was working with nations where migrants began their journeys for many of the Haitian countries such as Brazil and Chile to accept return migrants. So basically DHS is sending these migrants back on planes because we can't accept that many people and uh, they're not being processed, etc, etc. I mean, they are, but a lot of them aren't. Um, yeah, great job on your open border policy, Biden. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub down below, drop a comment, let me know how I'm doing, let me know what I can do to improve, and thanks for staying plugged in. Peace out, crew.